If you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. Hi, and welcome back to another entry in the Breakdown series. So, some of you have been asking for some guidelines regarding cooperative play in Tarkov, and this is one of the most challenging and engaging experiences you'll ever have in a game. Period. Tarkov is just such a one-of-a-kind and unforgiving beast, and it can be very difficult to tell friend from foe. So, how do you go about it? Well, there are definitely some rules of thumb when playing in a group. Me? I play mostly solo, but I also duo frequently with Moist. A little bit of backstory lore. Moist is my real life comrade for about 15 years and we've been playing co-op games ever since. We know exactly what we are getting into and what we can expect from each other. We don't consider ourselves to be such great players, but I personally do believe that we have the teamwork bit down which makes us for a force to not be underestimated. Even though our playstyles can sometimes be like water and fire, I think this adds to making a good team when you have different ideas going during the firefights and we can complement each other's styles. We respect each other and we put trust in each other's judgement. We also fool around a lot. Banter is the most important thing after slaying the enemy and staying alive. Never forget to have fun. Anyway, if you want to have the most fresh duos of moist experience, come check out the live streams at twitch.tv slash crashed. I stream Monday through Saturday and we quite frequently have the duos going. And like I said before, I don't think we are necessarily the best players, but we look out for each other, which is the most important thing of all in an experience like Tarkov, if you ask me. We very, very rarely run into situations where we cannot shoot at a target because we are too busy going like, is that you? A good team effort relies upon good communication. Whatever you do that is out of the ordinary or possibly unexpected by your mates, call it out. All of it, no exceptions. Better to call out too much than too little. First priority is to get a good voice comms going and when it's too much you can always scale it down. Call out movement, enemy location, plans of engagement, etc. Everything. You want to make sure you are on one line with your partner always. Also, agree upon a word to use to seize all communications. This can be really helpful when you want to listen out when an enemy is close but your partner does not realize it yet or he's in the middle of a story or something like that. In our case, this word is comms. Somebody yells comms, the other guy shuts the hell up. This makes it so that you don't have to shush the other guy or whatever it might be that you do. I have a clear and concise call out and everybody knows immediately what's expected. No confusion, no hesitation. This will clear up your communication game a lot. Let's roll the tape and show some scenarios in action. Note that in these scenarios, we don't always survive each engagement. This is also not the point of the video. Try to listen and see what we do and how we go about a situation and learn from it to hopefully improve your own squad games. Sometimes we have good plays and sometimes we don't have good plays. It's just the nature of the game. The educational bit is the most important to me to show off in a format like this. So this is kind of what it looks like when we push a building. Oh, you this hear guy's it? inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Some kind of silenced full auto thing. Okay, how do you want to approach this? I'm just going in. Okay, what's your locale? Uh, front of the side door. Uh, right side door? Yeah. Okay. Opening the door now. Okay, I'll move up to the other side. I think he's on the second or the third. Okay, so quite a lot happens even before we enter the building. Make note of our callouts. Every move we make is being called out so we know exactly what is happening. Custom three story is not that big. We are usually not a fan of pushing the exact same doorway together. It leaves for very little room to move and it gives away the fact that we are a duo when the enemy spots one of us. They will also spot the second straight away. Right here I'm taking the right side door on the ground floor while Moist goes around the back. On the back side you can only enter the middle floor so for us this gives us the most information the quickest. I can basically see if the ground floor is clear in one go. And Moist can do the same on the middle floor. You moving other side? Yep. But if I have to move up, I'll... If you can make some noise on your side. To move up this metal stairs. Yeah, I hear him. He's on wood. Alright. He's in one of these doors. Uh, like one of the rooms. Probably on second, I think. Alright, I'm on stairs. You moving on which uh, floor? I'm on the staircase from 1 to 2. Okay. Moving up to the second floor. 
Oh, great. I'm gonna open the door, second floor. Uh, yep. Don't see him yet. Bunch of dead bodies. Yeah, so he's on two. With Moist now in the building on the middle floor, directly to my left, he calls out there are dead bodies. This can be an indicator our enemy is on the middle floor still. Because I am on the central staircase and I have not heard anything happen above me. He could still be above me, but it's a very slim chance. My gut tells me he could be in the elbow section on the middle floor. I, I am on two. I am on two. I don't see him on two. Might be an elbow. I'm still on the main staircase. Right? Uh, was a scav on the on the stairs where I came from. I'm in a room. Okay. I'm on stairs from two to three now. Okay. Yeah, this guy knows where I'm at exactly now. It is kind of unfortunate that Moist had to deal with a scav. His cover is now blown, and like he says himself, the enemy now knows exactly where he is. I really want to move up towards him at this point, but it would only give my position away as well. And we also don't have 100% confirmation on where the enemy is exactly located yet. Which room are you in? Yeah, he's elbow. Coming. I'm dead. So they were indeed in the elbow. I'm too late to save Moist at this point, which blows, but I still push immediately regardless. I don't believe in camping bodies and I also don't have the patience for it. Either way, I'm avenging my fallen comrade. Enemy is now probably in an unguarded state of mind. They have just eliminated Moist. Same principle as we discussed in the previous episodes. Capitalize on their false sense of security. Even if the enemy turns me, chances are he still needs to get a reload in or whatever. Killed him. Nice. I think it was so. There's another one. So this guy in the room died from the grenade. They were both pretty juicy. I pre-fire some of the rooms before I get to looting and scoot away from this place. I already made a bunch of noise so might as well go full loud with the pre-fire. There were no other guys left though. Let's check out the next situation. Yeah, so I'm guessing there's already um, a guy in the resort. So what I'll do is I'll stick to the low ground. Uh, hit up 107, maybe you can walk on past, hit up the stairs on the far end, and then do 2 to 6. Okay. So we'll, we'll do it from the back side out. So we are pretty late to the resort, and it's safe to assume there's already guys inside, and we should always be on our guard in these high traffic areas. Formulate a general plan or a course of action for when you get in, so you don't have to waste time in this high traffic area. This will keep you alive more and on the move. No lollygagging. I hear guys on wood. Yeah. They're above us. Now this should be a standard practice call out for any squad. You hear sound, you call it. You know where the sound is coming from, call it. Short and concise, maximum information. Very good. Two to six, I'm guessing. Yeah. My map knowledge tells me that they are likely to be in room 226 or 222, which is almost directly above us. I'm just here in a corner, in the hallway. Yeah, I'm gonna push. Moist, displaying perfect duo strategy to provide cover and overwatch while we spend some time in the room looting. Too many times I come across a group of guys all looting the same guy at the same time and not paying attention. They make for the easiest kills. Please don't be like that. And mostly, in, uh, mostly in two guys understood. Sometimes things happen too fast to make callouts before you make the shot. In this case, we take the shot, and during the second, we provide boys the information about what's going on. Uh, can't really help. Uh, you go, go up you. the other side. Yeah, go around. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. 
The situation is, like the first in the customs, begging for a pincer move. So far the enemy has only spotted me. Moist is in the clear. While well, I'm providing the enemy with a distraction on this side, Moist can silently move beneath us in a normal walking pace. No way the enemy will hear him when they are so tunnel visioned on me. I don't make any crazy moves and most of all try not to die until Moist flanks around the other side and is in position. Two of them are peeking on me. I killed one. One of them is still up. He's in one of the rooms. Okay, coming up. I'm gonna make some noise. He just came out. He's on the left side for me, right side for you. Just pa uh, the first room past the table. Okay. Making up. I'm on the other side now. Huh? Yeah, I don't see you yet. I see you. Come up. He's in the room. You see which room I'm looking at? He's in the first room past the table. Uh, not yet. My my right? Yeah, on your right, my left. Sometimes making too many callouts will get you kind of stuck in this very slow thing when you want to make sure you are 100% on the same page. This is a natural kind of thing because I think the more information you have, the more you feel this kind of pressure not to mess up. If that makes sense. I have the same. When you recognize this is happening and it's slowing down your play as a team, thus providing the enemy to think and formulate a response, etc. It might be wise to just go for the assertiveness and move up yourself to show your comrades exactly what you mean. And best for you, so for you, so my closest next to the best table? for you. Best for me, okay. Okay, moving up. These are one of these rooms. I don't have a grenade. Same. They connect. Going in. Oh yeah, he's in the bathroom here. He's dead. Nice. Good job. Nice, good stuff. This time we are on the woods where we take out another duo. I think a lot of the general strategies from playing solo carry over into the duos as well. In case you haven't watched the previous entries in the series yet, I recommend to check out the breakdowns playlist on the channel. Making full use of movement and combining this with plenty of callouts can really improve your success as a team. Be smart when pushing. When one of the team members has made a move or noise, thus attracted the attention to him, it's time for the partner to make a move when the enemy have their backs turned to him. This one is a showcase of exactly that. Moist and I have been eyeing up a guy across the forest and we learn in which direction he is going. We formulate a plan and we act. I see movement past the scaf house towards the wall, far end. I think he just went down in the... Uh... To the bunker. I'm not sure if the... Nah, the uh, bunker's... Bunker's a bit further up ahead. Yeah. He went to the wall, he's like moving left to right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's moving towards the... Yeah, left to right alongside the wall. Okay, I'm he has a six. helmet. See where I'm looking at? Yeah, I see him, I see him, I see him. Okay, we wait for mm, the right time. Good oh, there's two guys, two guys. Two. So far, so good. We are gathering a lot of information on our enemies. Moist just took a shot with the Mosin, which is incredibly loud. He's standing not too far away from me, so the enemies in question will have a clear direction of danger. This is my cue to move to a different location and catch them from another angle. Took a Where's shot the other at the guy? guy. He's in front, next to the rocks. Oh, I see. They are they're moving in front of the rock. I see. I'm moving I'm on the right. The, yeah. I'm running parallel to them. Yep, same. Sorry, I had a shot at the second guy, so I tried to take him. Didn't yeah, hit no him. Worries. No worries. This damn sucks now, though. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's really bad. I know. Do you still see them? No, I think they're behind. They're behind this big rock now. Yeah. They have to cross the road there. Oh. Nice, nice. Oh lag. Where, where, where? One of them is lit up. Past the, past the first big rock now. First big rock on our left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Ah, shit. He tanked a lot of shit. Uh, oh, he's shot now. One of the guys spotted me. I don't see them. I'm on the road towards checkpoint and I'm gonna cross. Yeah, I'm, I'm on your left. Careful, that's a very open if they spot you. Yep. And they fell back. Moist is right, and this push is not the safest, but it's kind of an educated one. We know the enemy location. They have mid-level gear, and at least one of them is lit up and probably almost dead. Chances are they're trying to fall back and heal, so we push. I want to capitalize on the advantage we have now by cutting the enemy completely off from an escape route. The road they were taking from left to right alongside the wall is about to close. I'm gonna run to the second big rock. Okay. Oh, they're getting. I'm getting shot at now. Don't see him. No, same. He's on the. Yeah, he's still on the first rock. Okay. I don't think they saw me move up. No, I don't think either. Try to survive here. I have to wait for my stamp. Hey guys, how's it going, man? Welcome to the stream, dude. I, oh God, I still jump. think they're on the first rock. One of them oh. is dead. Nice. Pushing up on the first rock a little bit from where you were first before you crossed. You're on second the second rock. I'm pretty convinced I caught a glimpse of the second guy just as I peeked the rock. But with the gunfire from me killing his buddy, he already knows where I'm at. I know Moist is still roaming and this is the perfect time for him to strike the enemy from behind. So I make sure to duck into cover and provide Moist with as much info as I can to let him clean this up. Remember that Tarkov is not about who gets the most kills or whatever. When in a team, you play as a team. Make full use of the strength in numbers. Flank enemies. Be smart. It would be foolish for me to risk my life to peek this guy when Moist can clean him up uncontested. Second You're guy is second. behind the... Uh, yeah, I'm on the second rock. Second uh, guy is behind the first rock on the back side. Okay. He knows where I'm at. He's looking in my direction. So it's on the back of it for you. Yeah, towards the wall, like wall side. Okay. I'm gonna cross the road here, move up on him. Put pressure on him. Crossing the road now. I'm at the rock. Gonna see if I can flush him out. Moved. No, not sure where to. Got him. Nice. He's dead. Last bullet. Oh, good job, man. Hell yeah, dude. Of course, where things go well, they sometimes also don't. Check this out. Bit of a blooper. So, while Moist is looting one of the rooms, I am covering the stairs. Nice. I should also check these mags, by the way. Give me a second. I don't have cover on stairs anymore. It's half PP. Oh, there's a guy. Yeah, he's dead. There's another, another. On the stairs. He's down. I'm dead. Oh, fuck. Shit, in the one second, I don't have cover on the stairs. Oh my god. <laughs> you killed the first guy? Yep. I don't watch the stairs for one second. So, if you made it this far, then I hope you enjoyed and maybe learned a new thing. In case you did, please leave a like on the video. I generally don't really like asking for this, but it does help the channel out tremendously. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new around here for more EFT. Also, let me know in the comments what you think. Share your ideas. What is the thing that every squad in Tarkov should be doing? Also, feel free to tune into the live streams. Monday through Saturday on twitch.tv slash crashed. Often solo, but also frequently duo. A lot of shenanigans and we try to balance killing enemies with having fun. See you there. And as always, thanks for watching.